Hi, good morning guys, thanks for joining me. Hope everybody's well, hope everybody survived them storms, and those storms are something else. I think it got down to around minus eight in the area where I live, you know, and that's pretty much unheard of. And thankfully now all that snow's washed away. We had a bit of rain yesterday, the day before as well, and that's brought the temperature up just a little bit. It's around about five or six degrees, that's pretty much normal for this time of year now. But what was nice walking through the woods this morning, there's quite a few buds starting to pop out, certainly on the birch and on the willows. Again, just showed us now that spring's not too far around the corner. We're going to start getting out a bit more and enjoying a bit more of the nicer weather. So what I thought we'd do in today's video is talk about an axe, and this axe here is another Altifers. For those of you which watch the channel regular know I've been a fan of Altifers for the past few years. And this one here is the classic range, and this is the Hunter's Axe. This is what we're going to talk about in today's video. So this axe I picked up from the Bushcraft Show last summer time, and I think I paid around about £50 for it. I've been absolutely chuffed to bits with it. 20 inch overall length with a two pound head, American Hickory handle, and an awesome mask, you know, for that kind of price, you won't go far wrong with it. So just starting off with the mask which comes with it, it is a three mil leather mask, good heavy duty quality leather, riveted at the front here, so if you do lose them rivets, obviously them can re uh, be replaced. Nice welt running around the front of it there, and one thing which I do like about it is the shape of the mask. It just means if you put it down, all of the head is covered up, and it's just going to stop any moisture from touching that metal and starting it to rust out. What I've used to condition the mask with, I've just used uh, mink oil, and that seemed to blow it up well. It's conditioned the leather well, it's also waterproofed it. And one of the other things that I do like about it is how they've actually fastened it up just by using this bit of a lanyard. Again, if this stretches out or breaks, you can easily replace that, whether you do replace it with leather. Or perhaps if you want to put some paracord or bank line in if you're out in the field you know that will hold it just as well because over time that you do find with these straps that they will stretch and if you've got a little popper on them then they sometimes fall out of position so again you know do I like how they've actually fastened this one up so just like all the other components on the axe the handle itself is also good quality made out of American Ecri so good heavy duty wood and the grain structure on that looks fine and when I first purchased the axe I just made sure that everything lined up and I'm quite happy with that. One thing that I do like about the length of it, it does lend itself to be carried in a rucksack. It's not too heavy and it's not too long. And the length of the handle is perfect if I want to use it for double handed use or also single handed use. You know, it's not too long if I find it uncomfortable from using it single handed. It's not too short if I find myself using it double handed. Just running down the bottom here, we have got a lanyard hole. One thing I like to do with the lanyard holes is just carry just a little piece of cordage in my pocket or just in my bag and I tend just to tie it up in a loop just like so and then when it comes dragging the axe up it just keeps it out of the way it keeps it out of the moisture on the ground and you know where it is at all times and then when I need it I just simply push one end through the lanyard hole and then that can be just pushed back through and that there is a nice quick secure fitting then that means the axe can be young up, it's just out of the road like I was saying, you're not putting the head in any kind of moisture. It also just makes it just a little bit more safer, meaning that you're not going to kick it over. And then when you're finished and you want to use the axe, you just simply just undo it and just pull it out and away you go. And that just brings me on to the meat and potatoes of the axe and that's the head itself. So like I mentioned at the beginning, it's a two pound head. Which you can see stamped there, or 0.85 of a kilo, if that's the way that you like to measure things. Just alongside the old brute logo, just on the middle of it there. One thing I do like about it is the quenchy marks which are left on it. It looked really rustic when I first purchased it. It was all purples and reds, along with the black. But over time, that will wear off, and this will go more back to its grey silver colour. Nice polished bevel on it. It's razor sharp when you buy them. Very easy to sharpen, you know, it's that kind of steel that does retain an edge. But again, you know, when it comes to sharpening, it's not too hard that you can't put a decent edge on it. Just a quick strop over or something like a stone or a puck, you know, really brings these back up. Another thing which I do like on it is the wide pole just on the back there, just for knocking and stakes, you know, temp pegs, that kind of thing. Just make sure that you don't use it on metal, or else what you may do is just deform the eye. But, uh, you know, obviously just using it on wood, you know, shouldn't be any kind of problem. Just comparing that with the shape. I have another Hulse for Dax, this is from the Agdor range, absolutely awesome axe for the money, again dirt cheap, I think you pay around about £30 for these now. And you can just see the two different shapes and the heads there, one of them you know is just quite a flat basic shape, where the little classic axe here is a bit more ergonomic. Again I just like the cutaway, just underneath here, certainly for single handed use for choking up on, it just makes that a lot more comfortable. And when it comes to cutting, you know like I say that's razor sharp, it is a good cutter and it's also a good splitter. So 
So if it says that you want to take a bit more time and make a bit more effort when it comes to knocking stakes in, then obviously you can make them out of using the axe itself. This is going to save the edge on the knife, it's quick and it is quite easy. Certainly you've got quite a few of them to make. So what I've got here, just a little piece of dead timber, it's around about 8 to 10 inches. I do tend to go for around about 10 to 12 inches, but this is all I could find at the moment. So I'm just going to put just a quick spike just at the bottom. I'm not looking for anything too fancy or too sharp. something like that will do if you want to just tidy the edges up or like I say for the ground that we're in that's perfect for it and then just cut just a quick number seven notch just in the top here I'm just going to clean that out so we can retain the cordage just using the top end of the axe here which is the toe I like to keep this nice and sharp as you can see there that's cutting away that material nice and cleanly And then just clean some of that out. And then we're just going to crown just the top of it off. And there we have just a quick 30 second stake that's going to work perfectly for us like i was saying you could take more time with that if you wanted to you could actually just eat that up and dry that off but like i was saying for just a quick stake and the ground conditions that we've got at the moment that should be perfect So just running alongside using the axe single-handed, when it comes to using it double-handed, again, I do like this 20-inch handle. It's not too long and it's not too short. Again, put it into relative context, you know, I've got to put that on my back, I've got to carry it in a rucksack. So again, you know, it's that perfect size. So just like cutting wood, when it comes to splitting wood, it has got a nice taper around about two-thirds of the way down. It really does start to flare out, which is going to split your wood well. And then just on top there, if I can get the camera to pick it up, you can just see the wedge and ring which is actually the, uh, the head's been fastened on with. Just like the other Ultra Attacks, never had an issue with it, I've never had it come loose. One thing I like to do is just make sure that I put a quite a bit of conditioner on that, I just use beeswax and also some oil just to make that swell out a little bit. And then just on the handle itself, I just give it just a general coating of boiled in seed oil and that seems to do the job. So what we're going to do, we've got this down pine here, it's been down for a couple of years, we're just going to tidy it up and then we're just going to give it around about 10 hits just to see just how well it cuts. So perfect for delimbing. Well, I couldn't tell myself that was around about 30, maybe 40, but once that started going, I just wanted to cut it all the way through. Just to show you really, you know, quite a light axe, quite a small axe, but it makes quite light work of anything that it comes across. So just before we finish the video off, I thought to just quickly run through the items which I like to carry when it comes to maintaining the edge. Now the axe head on one of these axes is a high carbon steel, so when I get in, I'll probably just give it a quick clean off and also a coating of oil. The edge itself at the moment doesn't feel too bad, but if it did, then these are the kind of items which I would use. So just starting off with the puck, this is a double sided puck, so fine grit on one side and a coarse grit on the other. Could quite easily just use a carbide stone or a Japanese water stone, something like that. And then running alongside the puck, I will carry a file, and this is an Alco work file. So double cut on one side, single cut on the other, perfect for taking away nicks or any kind of chips that you may have. And then probably the last process which I'll do is strop it. And again, this is the large paddle strop, perfect for the axe. 
it does cover all the bit it can be a little bit too big to pack in the rucksack so you know we'll carry a smaller version and then just keeping the cost down if you do find these kind of things expensive you know, there's a cheaper option out there and these are an handy little thing to carry and this is just a little diamond rod again you can pick these up from amazon or ebay anywhere between five and ten pound just untwist the little collar there and that will expose just your little sharpening edge so one broadside so perfect for knives and axes a little bit of a groove just in the center there for fish hooks and if you just take it out all the way you've got a little section there if you've got any kind of serrations on knives that you want to sharpen and again a nice lightweight option that's going to keep the cost down when it comes to maintaining the edge well guys hope that's been a bit of help and anyone that's interested in the Ulster's classic certainly an awesome axe for the money certainly worth checking out and like i say you certainly won't be disappointed if you buy one so like always you just let me say thanks a lot for stopping by and watching the video like always until next time you take care and i'll see you again